let's get started. So if you, I don't know if you all came uh, last week, but um, last week I presented a gift uh, in the sense where you were only working for yourself on your own local um, repository. And here today we're going to see how to connect to a remote server and a remote server can help you either to collaborate with other people or simply to back up your work to somewhere else. So what, it's, it's good to start with a bit of a schematic of what we're trying to see here because everything else after will be a bit um, different. So last week we saw how to work with the local repository, which is the same as your workplace, but you remember you just commit and then you can go back in time and whatever. What we're going to see today is a remote repository. And with the remote repository, we're going to see two things, we see, which is git push, which means from local to remote, and git pull, which is from remote to local. And the nice thing about having a remote repository is that you can back up your local repository, but you can also easily make a copy of your repository somewhere else using commands as git clone, and then start working from this repository, syncing with this one, and working back with this one, syncing, and all connected together. Okay, so let's see how you achieve that. So, so let's go back to our example of last week. Oh, one more thing. Uh, last week at the end of the presentation, I told you um, there were also some graphic interface for working with Git. So this week, I decided to do at least part of the presentation using the great graphic interface I use so that you can have an idea of what it looks like and whether um, it looks good or not or what you want to do. So what I use is Visual Studio Code. Do you see this? Yeah, is it good? No. Sharing is stopped, it says. Um, okay, so I have to change what I'm sharing. Okay, so now you should see it. Uh, so this is a Visual Studio Code window. I've opened the shopping directory, which was our, our repository last week, which which has uh, one file in it, which is shopping list. And that's the state of your file currently here. Yeah. Um, so these are different things. Uh, what we need right now is just to show you what the history of our repository is. And for this, I like to use one extension that's called Git Graph that you can open here. Just give it a bit of time. And so typically this gives you the same information as Git log, but with a bit more information and a bit more color uh, right out of the box without having to deal with uh, customizations. And so what it tells you is here you see you have one line that's uh, bold, that's the current head of your repository. So you're on the wizard branch and you add the commit, add apples and bread. And if you click on the commit, you can see what was committed. If you click on the file, you can have a view of what was added during the commit. So it's kind of all the information in one place. Kind of thing. And you can see you have two other branches, which are master and test. Okay. So now if I want to, I have this repository that exists and I want to put it on a remote, on GitHub. If I'm in Visual Studio Code, I can click the little cloud there and it will come up with a pop-up and guide me into doing it. But because you're not necessarily going to do it from, um, from Visual Studio Code, uh, I, will, I will do it um, manually this time. And so what we need is we need to go to, oh, why is it? Sorry. I don't have the window I want. Sorry about that. Okay. So what we need, we need to go to uh, GitHub 
and you need to create an account and whatever. I'm not going to do that. I'm just using my normal account. Once you work a bit on GitHub and have friends on GitHub, you can see lots of stuff going up. What you need to do then, once you have an account on GitHub, is you create your remote repository with a plus there, and you do a new repository. And GitHub tells you to enter a name for your repository. I can be the same as your local repository, it doesn't matter. You can choose to be public or private. Uh, it just changes who can see the repository. Um, public, if anyone can see it, private, you choose who can see it. And it gives you some option to initialize the repository with some files, but you can ignore that, we'll ignore today, and just create a repository. GitHub is working. So we have a repository that's called shopping, but for the moment it's empty, there's nothing in it. It's just a name, it's just an address on the internet. GitHub gives you some information on, on what to do to bring your local repository into it. First thing to realize is that you can connect to GitHub using two protocols, HTTPS or SSH. HTTPS will always work. It will just ask you for your GitHub uh, password every time you connect one way or the other. To use SSH, you first need to install a SSH key on GitHub. Uh, you can find all the information on GitHub to do that. And once you have the key there and you have a nice config file for SSH, you can connect without exchanging, uh, without typing passwords. So um, anyway, I have SSH set up, so I will use SSH in the presentation, but feel free to just change to HTTPS um, every time. So it tells you different kind of things. In our case, we have already an existing repository that we want to push to the remote, so we're going to do this. Let's do the first um, command. So it gives you the command that you have to type in the terminal. So I need to. Um, okay, sorry, I will do that. So I will change what I share, that will be easier to do. So it gives you the first command there, and let's go and type that on the terminal. So I'm going back to VS Code because it comes up with a terminal. Here, when you open the terminal, you're writing your, um, the same directory as you were before. So I'll copy paste the command here. So what does it do? It tells you that you want to add a remote. The address of your remote is this. That's the address on GitHub using SSH to access the remote um, repository. And I want it to be nicknamed origin uh, when I'm in my local repository. This nickname can be whatever you want. Origin is the default, just you can change to GitHub if you prefer, whatever. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so what happened now? If I refresh GitHub, well, nothing really happened. You know, we just, this just created something in Git config file that there's a remote somewhere, but we haven't really connected to it. We haven't exchanged information between the two. GitHub after tells you to do that. I would not do that. <laughs> I find this comment to be very dangerous. What it does, it will take the current branch you have checked out and force it to be called master. If you look at where we are, we're in the wizard branch. If we force it to be called master, we will lose the master branch and everything that is attached to it. So we don't want to do that and we don't really need to do that. So let's just do the next one. Okay, what does this one do? So this is a git push. Push means I want to take information from my local repository and push it to my remote. So origin is the nickname of the remote I want to push to. And here master is the name of the branch I want to push from my local to my remote. And the dash u option, it means I tell to git, I want them to be kind of linked so that further comments to push and pull between the 
these two branches will be a lot easier to write. Okay, so what happens if I do that? And it's still doing things. Okay. So if I look at the GitHub repository first, it changed. You see, it tells me I have one branch. I click there, I have one branch called master. And that's the name of the branch there. And I have one file there, shopping list. And the last commit of that branch was merge branch with that. If I look at the history of my local repository, I can see I still have my branch without master and test, except master comes up with this origin next to it. And this means there's a origin master branch that exists on the remote origin and it's right at the same place as my master branch, that is my local branch. So when you have a remote, Git creates another set of branches, which are called remote tracking branches, which tell you um, what is the state of your remote, so that you can compare your remote, the state of your remote with the state of your local. Okay, so we pushed one branch. Uh, Usually you want to push everything to the remote. So what do you do? So instead of doing this, um, the line here in the terminal at the bottom, git push dash u origin master, you can modify that to be or dash u origin. And I guess I don't need to explain to you what it does. It just pushes everything. Do it, wet. Okay, and you see it says it created two branches on GitHub. And now if I um, refresh my GitHub, it says I have three branches. I'm still on the master branch, but here I can switch branch to see the other branches. And um, you know, I have my three branches master without test. Okay, so right now, sorry, it's slow, sorry. I have pushed everything and now in my local rep repository, I can see all my branches have a corresponding origin, have a cor corresponding branch on the origin remote. Okay, is there any questions about creating the remote and pushing your work to the remote? Oh, okay, perfect. So, now that we have a remote and a local, we need to sync them both. Um, the synchronization of the two is not automatic, so you have to do it yourself. Kind of thing. So let's see how it works in practice. So we're in the wizard branch. We are going to do some work, and we're going to add some bananas to our shopping list. And we're going to commit this. Uh, so you see, um, VS Code tells me I have one change that is uncommitted there. So this is where I go to commit. And it tells me, it lists me all the changes there. If I click on the file, it shows me what has changed in the file. And I can click the plus to stage the file. And then I can just write a commit message. And See the top, and you click on the check mark here and commit for you locally. Okay. So we're, we've done our commit. Let's go back to the history. We see our wizard branch here has add bananas to it. But here we see the wizard branch on the remote is still at the same commit as it was before. We haven't changed the remote, we only changed the local one. Okay, so what do we know now? Um, if you're using a GUI, often you have a thing you can click to push to the remote, like here, I can do that, it will sync my remote with my local. But here we're going to do it again with the terminal just to show you how to do it. So what you do now, you simply have to tap git push. Again, this will Take the state 
off your local repository and push it to your remote. If you just put git push, it will just look at the branch that is currently checked out. So it will only push what's on with that now. I'll do that. Okay. And here it says it found some stuff and you updated a wizard on GitHub. And you see my history here, it has updated here. And if I look here on GitHub, it tells me um, I had pushes less than a minute ago. And if I switch to it, um, it tells me the last commit was add bananas. Okay, so it has pushed it. So if you remember correctly, the first time we had to tell it the name of the repo we were pushing to. Because we have used the dash u, after when we push or pull, we don't have to tell which, re which remote or what we want to do or which branch we want to push, it will know, okay? If you didn't put this option, it will tell you that it doesn't know what to do. Uh, and you would have to say, and in this case, you would have to say something like git push origin without get, you know, you would have to specify the name of the remote and the name of the branch you want to push. So that's why it's nice to add the dash u. Uh, it simplifies after the comments. Okay. Any, I mean, it's, it's been relatively simple there, but any question on, um, pushing changes from local to remote? No. Okay, so the other thing you can do is getting changes from remote to local. So when do you want to do that? Is for example, if you have something on several machines, uh, repository on several machines, you're working on it from several machines. If you work on it on machine A one day, when you arrive on machine B, you would want to bring these changes to your machine B, for example. So to do that, we need another local repository somewhere else. And to do another local repository, you can always clone your repository. So if you, if you find a repository on GitHub you'd like to use, you see the code box here. If you click on it, it will say clone with SSH and it gives you the address of the repository. So you, um, if you want to use HTTPS, you click there and it gives you the address using HTTPS. So it's, you do the one you want. You click here to copy the address. And then after, on the command line, you can, let's clear so it's easier. You can put git, clone, the address of your repository and the place where you want to clone it. So in this case, we're going to go and clone it in Scratch. Okay. <coughs> so now let's see, let's go to our new clan in cl clone, sorry, not clan clone in Scratch. Um, so let's open this one. I want to scratch this one. Okay. So now it opens the shopping one in um, Huh, it's not, it doesn't have the bananas. It doesn't look like the one I had before. So what does it look like? So first it tells me I'm on the branch master. And if I look at Big Graph, what does it tell me? It tells me I have the origin wizard branch, that's the remote tracking branch, the origin test branch. I have the origin master branch but I only have one local branch, which is master. So when you clone, your new clone will only have one, um, one local branch by default, okay? And by default, if you clone from GitHub, it will be the master branch. 
you can change that in uh, GitHub if you want it to be something else, but the default is master. So if you want to work on another branch after cloning, what you have to do is create a branch as we saw last week of this, um, at this space. So if we want to go back to wizard, for example, if we wanted to go back to wizard in VS Code, you just click on it. Well, sorry, right click on it. Check out branch. It tells you it will create a local branch that's called wizard. But, and so now you've got your local branch there. That's there. okay. But today let's just work on master. And now let's change our file. And now I want our master, I want some yogurt. Okay, I come to that. Okay, so I've done my commit on master branch, it's here. Okay, and then I can push it to GitHub. I will use the VS Code to show you how it works in VS Code. It doesn't ask me anything, it knows the name of the of the remote and whatever, and it has updated the, um, the repository. Doesn't say there, but look at master. Uh, master, the last commit is add your good. Okay, did I go too fast or is it okay right now? So if you were on the command line, you would have done a git push and you just Okay, so now we have our, reposit our local repository on um, Scratch that has a commit on master. This commit is also in our remote repository on GitHub, but we don't have this commit in our local repository on GData. So to get it on GData, you have to open the GData repository. And so first let's look at the history. So first thing to realize is that the origin master on this repository is still at mesh branch wizard. It doesn't have the yogurt yet. This is because as I told you before, the synchronization, you have to manually do the synchronization and it's in both directions you have to do the synchronization. So um, this local repository doesn't know that the remote has changed yet. So to, to see how it, it changed, um, in VS Code you could click there to know whether there have been some changes. On the terminal, we can do Sorry. Let's do that here. You can do git pull. Okay, let's do a git pull and see what happens. So pull means I want the information from the remote and bring it in the local, and I want to merge any new changes on the branch I have checked out into my current branch. Okay. So here it tells me from GitHub, I got some changes on master. And after it tells me already up to date. Okay, so why is it already up to date if I have some changes? Let's look at the history. So you see the origin master has a duty to add yogurt. But the thing is that in this repository, the branch we have checked out was wizard. So wizard was already up to date with origin. You did not have any changes. It's master that was updated. So now we have a local branch that is behind the remote tracking branch. So how are we going to um, bring them back together? You check out master and then you merge origin master into it. So you can just do a git merge origin master on the command line, or you can click there and merge into current branch. You must do the same thing. 
this is a nice option to uh, keep ticked. Um, it's not very important, but it's nice. It simplifies a bit the history, this view, so, so it's kind of nice. Okay, and so here, what we had, huh, why did it? Anyway. Sorry, I'm a bit puzzled because I don't think you should have done a merge commit, but it doesn't matter. So it merge your origin master branch and your master branch together. You see? All, all this and this got together here. And so now, obviously, your origin master and master is still not at the same place. So you have to push your master branch to get, up, to get them to the same place. Oh, they are the same place, and this has updated there. Doesn't say doesn't it? Anyway. Okay. Is there any questions there on working from if you have two clones from the same? remote repository? And do you understand how you bring changes from the, from the remote into the local? Um, it's a lot easier when you do a git pull. If you are already check out in the branch that you want to update, that you know you have updates from and you want to update because then you don't have to do all the thing about merging and whatever, git pull does it for you. Um, I just wanted you to show you a case where things didn't work um, just automatically. Okay. So this is to work if you have your own remote and your own local and you have right access to everything. In it. So let's do a summary of what we've seen. These are the comments you know you need to do what you've done now. First, to add, a, to add a remote, you'd first have to create it on GitHub, but once it's created, you can add it to your local repository with this command. And note that you can add several remotes to a local repository. It's probably not very useful uh, often, but uh, you can do it if you need to. After you've created the remote um, address in your local repository, you can push to this remote. So the first push, you do a git push dash u, and you either um, push only one branch or all of the branch to your nickname, to the, your repo. Once you have a repository on GitHub, whether it's your own or someone else, you can always um, get a local version of it with Git clone. And if you want to update your local repository from a, from a, a remote repository, you use Git pull. On the internet, you might see a lot of discussion whether you should use Git pull or Git fetch. Git pull is actually two comments put together. It's a git fetch followed by a git merge. Okay. Some people say doing a merge without knowing what you're going to merge and whatever, it's dangerous and you shouldn't do it and whatever. If you're doing some relatively easy work, um, it won't create any, any problem. So uh, you might have conflicts to fix, but with, it's like with an image, you might always have conflicts to fix. Um, so, one thing you should do, um, you should always pull, here I said pull before per push, but you should always pull before you start working in the morning on something, just in case you don't remember you've pushed something uh, the day before from another machine. So make sure your local repository 
um, is updated from your remote often and push your local work to your remote often as well, especially if you're using it as a backup. Um, it's just, well, I think if you push before pulling and there have been changes, normally Git should tell you it doesn't want to do it and you need to pull first. So it's pretty safe, but just for you to remember. Okay, any questions on working with your own remote repository? Is it possible to like um, have two different areas that are linked to the same remote repository? Like if you need your code in two different places on your local machine? Yeah. Well, or like two local branches linked to the same repository, remote repository? So depends what you call two local or whatever. So I will, I will go to the terminal too. So Right now, here, I have the same remote repository that exists in GData and in Scratch. Okay. Yeah. Is that what you were asking? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it works by whole repository. You can't, I mean, you can't just clone a branch itself. Uh, you will have the, the whole repository history in each time. Which but you is can good have time. it in two locations. You can have it in no, how many locations you want. Um, so for example, I have, I have one of them, which is there. Uh, my shopping there, it's, it's one of the repo we use. I could do a git clone, Sorry, what's the name of the... Um, I can clone it again here. So it just, you know, it just next to the other directory. Um, these two are two repository, two local repositories that point to the same remote. And you'd have to like update them each. Yeah. yeah. And you have, to, um, you can, you can link to local repository directly with each other, which I haven't shown here. The only difference you do with compared to GitHub GitHub, you can push and pull to the remote. Yeah. If you link two local repository together, you can only pull. So that means that if you want to update directly, shop two needs to be a remote of shopping. So you can pull from shop two into shopping. And then shopping has to be a remote of shop two. So you can pull from shopping to shop two. Right. Which, yeah. Um, which, some people prefer, some people prefer going via GitHub anyway because the GitHub gives them a backup anyway. Um, yeah, it's possible. But yeah. Um, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other question? No, okay. So we still have one case to go through, which is the most complicated. So remote repository, you cannot write into. So what is it? Um, you're working on, I don't know, are you working on what's in Git that you could maybe working on, on a model, climate model like Wolf. Wolf is under Git. Uh, the Wolf we have on um, Gadi, I maintain it. I'm definitely not going to give you right access to it. <laughs> Sorry. So what happens if you do something, do some changes and you want to share them with someone else and you think it really should go into the uh, main Wolf repository, Wolf repository for, um, for Gali. It becomes a bit more complicated but hopefully you're going to get it quickly. So again, let's start with a, a schematic. So you have the official remote repository you don't have right access to. I want to say Wolf, it could also be like, I don't know, a Python package you want to contribute to or something like that. Usually you don't have access to those. So you have your official remote repository. What do you do? The first thing you do is call, you create a fork. 
a fork will create a remote repository which you own. So it will be owned by your, by your own uh, GitHub account. It will still be on GitHub, okay, but under your account, not under someone else's account. So this remote repository is a copy of this one and you still have right, and you have right access to it, okay? And because you did a fork, these two nodes are there related. So once you have a fork of your repository, you can then do a clone and get your local repository and do git push and git pull or fetch or whatever you want and do your work there, okay? So this is well and good, but your work end up in your own repository and not the official repository that everyone uses as a source. So how do you, once you finish your work, you've all tested, it's all great and perfect. How do you get it from here to here? First, you have to make sure you update with whatever has happened in the official repository. You need to, you take your local repository and you add the official remote repository as a remote. And then you can, once it's added as a remote, you can pull from it. So you pull what happened in the re remote repository. You make sure your changes are work well with whatever happened on the official remote repository. And then you push them to your own remote repository. And then it's all nice and well, it's all up to date. And you want to push it here. You can't push because you can't write to here. So what you do, you create what we call a pull request. A pull request will tell the people here, hey, look here, I have some work you really want to pull into your repository. Okay? It starts being complicated. There's a lot of errors there, but. <laughs> okay. So. Um, I'm not necessarily going to present all of this, we'll see depending on the time, but I'll show you a bit of that, um, mainly the fork and the pull request, because this bit, we've seen it already, just a git remote add, and you give the address and the git pull is uh, usual, and once you pull, you just have to merge and make it sure that it works and push after. So all this was already seen pretty much. So I just want to show you that how it works. Okay. So I think I have here. Okay. So this is the repository where I have all the testing I do when I port a new version of Wolf. Okay. It's owned by the COCMS um, organization. It happens I have writing access to it, but let's assume I don't have right access to it and I want to um, to work on it. So what you do, you get to the GitHub page and right at the top right here, you see it's written fork. So you just have to click there and to create a fork that you own. Actually, I'm going to do that now. I was thinking not to do that, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to delete that and oh, I don't need to delete it. Okay. So let's do a fork. Ah, it doesn't want it because I've done it. And let's delete what I've done. Okay, let's create a fork. Where should you fork the in my own space? GitHub is working. Okay. So now I have a new, um, it's the same repository. It's in my own space, Sika Rouge. And underneath it says where it comes from. You know, it was forked from this place. So it knows the link between the two. So instead of doing a local repository and whatever, uh, so to make it a bit simpler and faster, 
Uh, let's just add a readme file because I can do that from GitHub. Um, and just copy the file. It doesn't matter. Okay. So here I have, a, I have a new commit that exists here but doesn't exist in the original series yet. And I'm thinking they really should have read me far. So what do I need to do? It tells me this branch is one commit ahead of series CMS master. I can click pull request here, or I can put, click pull request here. It's the same. I can do a new pull request. Okay. It opens a kind of a complicated window. It gives you the ability to choose which repository you want to do a pull request between. So the best repository is the repository where it's going to go to, and the head repository is where to take the change from. I want to take the change from some C Carouge and put it in Siri CMS. Okay. And I've done my change in master branch, so I want it to go into master branch. And here it tells me what the change is. It's just adding a file with two lines. So if I do create pull requests, I can write a comment on what my work is about and so on. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I've done this pull request and if you look at it, the pull request is not created on my repository, it's, what, it's created on the COCMS repository. Okay, so people who, who on this repository, suddenly have this created and know that someone wants to get changes into their repository. Okay? And normally you can, there you happen to have reviews and whatever. Uh, we won't go into the realm of review, it's just people looking at your code and telling you, oh, you should change this and change that, or do this and do that. And once, once it's finished, you can merge your pull request uh, just here. Okay, is there any question on collaborating? Was it a bit too, it's a lot easier to do it for real, but it just gives you an indication of what it would look like. Um, like that. So when you, when you made the, 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 the pull request, you had to specify from the master branch to the master branch, does that mean that you can, Put it from a master branch into something that is not the master branch. Can you change branch like that? Yes. The branches branches have not uh, are only a name, so usually you do it from the same branch to the same branch because it's a lot easier on the mind to remember what's going on. Uh, but if you need to, you can change branches. Okay. And in a way, in a way, you can, on your local repository, you might have a branch that is as, as a descriptive name of what feature you develop. I don't know. Whereas on the official repository, they may have one branch where they bring together all the developments. So they might want you to to put the pull request directly to the development branch, or maybe not. Depends on on how the how the repository works and how people work. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other question? We have a bit more time. We have Twelve minutes. So um if there is anything else, like not necessarily from today or whatever, anything you want to review or anything, just ask. It's the time to do it. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I I will just finish with a few remarks of, at the end. This was only a Git introduction. Git can do. We didn't show you, I didn't show you all the comments that Git has. 
uh, Git has other commands and a lot of the commands have a lot of options. So Git can do a lot more things than that. This is probably the main things you're going to use. But if you ever happen to ha be in a Git repository and be thinking, oh, I really want to do that, but it seems complicated and I don't know how to do it. The best thing is look around, ask us, whatever. Like usually there's a solution in Git to do it. So yeah, it's not because it was not in the presentation these last two days, these last two times that it's not possible to do. Okay. Thank you.